The wildfires continue to rage in many parts of the Pacific Northwest and in California. To talk about it in a little more detail is U.S. journalist and one of our regular contributors, Lisa Daftari, joining me from Los Angeles. Lisa, do we know exactly what the causes were for many of these wildfires? Were they man-made or perhaps lightning strikes? Yes, man-made, lightning strikes, heat doesn't help. The fact that we don't get rain out here doesn't help. It's all of the above, Hal. It's been horrific. It has been the worst year on record. And if you remember, you and I spoke at length in 2019, just last year, about how horrific last year's fires were. This year has been record-breaking. And it's not only be it's because that we have the arson and the protesters and um, a gender reveal party gone wrong that has been responsible for one of the, the major fires. But we have a hundred fires that are independent fires uh, that are going on right now all throughout the coast. Uh, there is no relief here in Los Angeles. The air quality is horrible. You could feel it. I attempted to take my son out for a walk uh, over the weekend and you can feel the burning in your throat. You can feel it. The air quality is horrific for for, for the elderly, um, for many who haven't gone out or because we're still under semi-quarantine, the only relief we do have are walks, but we're definitely feeling it here. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's just something that we're going to have to endure until we see some relief. Over 35 deaths, which is something that's also record-breaking uh, in this, this case. That's very sad, yeah. And so many hundreds of thousands of acres lost so far from the wildfires. And it's not just California, but we're talking about no. Oregon and Washington State. The governor of Washington State is blaming climate change, saying he's never seen things this bad. Yeah, we have friends who actually had to, to move not to three different cities, but three different states so far. They keep getting evacuated. Um, you know, that's when you start asking yourself, am I just bad luck for these fires? But it, it's, you know, in all seriousness, th this is, it's, it's traveling and it is spreading and they have not been able to contain these fires. The majority of them are still raging on. Uh, and, you know, as you said, this, this, this year is particularly um, horrible because it's in so many different states. Usually California has, has a problem with wildfires. I know you have in certain parts of Canada as well, just because of the brush, because of the heat, because of the lack of rain. But uh, this year, you know, add arson to that, add the protesters to that. And, you know, you have a horrible combination of just, just acres and acres of, of land lost. And, you know, you talked about the air quality, how it's affected so much of California, even here in Western Canada. In fact, over the weekend, Vancouver, B.C. had some of the worst air in the entire world coming up from California, Washington State and Oregon. Now, are firefighters getting a handle on the situation in California? What are you hearing? Yeah, um, it, you know, they're, they're out there. They're fighting. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's I think most of the fires are between five to seven to 10 percent contained at this point. Um, you know, a, a crazy situation happened where someone in my mother's apartment building uh, where my parents live had a bad fall and they called for an ambulance. And it was a very bad fall. She had a, a, a head injury and it took them so long to respond. And the 911 operator said to my mother, who was the one who made the call, that we are just so spread thin for resources right now because everyone is helping out with the fires. Now, still in California, Lisa, a $100,000 reward has been offered in a brazen ambush shooting of two Los Angeles sheriff's deputies. Lisa, I've seen the video. The shooter looked like a kid. I, exactly right. Exactly right. The shooter looked like a kid or at least dressed like one or had the, the physique of one. But if you saw the video, it is it is horrific how brazen this individual is to go up and point blank shoot at these two officers, both of whom have only been on the force for 14 months. Young, young. One is 20, 26 years old. The other one, I think, is about 31. The, the female has a six-year-old child. And the worst part of this, Hal, if you read this part of the story, is that when these two individuals were taken to the hospital where they still remain in critical care, protesters went to the hospital, blocked the entrance and exits of the hospital, and started chanting, we hope you die. I mean, you know, no words, no words. I mean, these are the individuals who we rely on. And, you know, of course, there are police brutality stories. There are stories that talk about police officers who should be called out, who should be fired, who should be charged for what they have done. But at the same time, these innocent individuals who have dedicated their lives to protecting the law, and protecting civilians, they just didn't deserve this. This is, it's horrific. It truly is horrific. 
Well, hopefully they do catch the perpetrators, the shooter there. Now, Lisa, let's talk about what's happening in Oregon. They're not only dealing with a lot of wildfires there, but also 100 days of violent protests. Has the mayor of Portland said, you know what, enough's enough, we're taking back our city? <laughs> well, you know, um, law enforcement and um, you know, the leadership in Oregon are telling two different stories. Um, they've given up. They've given up completely because they just can't get a handle on this. But at the same time, with regards to the governor, the mayor, um, they have been very careful as to the language that they use. They want to stay on the side of the protesters. They want to stay, um, you know, sympathetic to them. And because of that, I don't know if the language has been strong enough to stop these protesters. It has raged on and on. It's just total anarchy total chaos and we don't know when there's going to be an end in sight you know you look at the individuals who are arrested and then released and then arrested again um, whether it be for violence for brutality for arson um you know i don't think there are these protesters are fearful of any consequences and when you have a situation where you have these individuals who are coming out every single day and not fearful of being arrested not fearful of any, any consequences not fearful of the law you know there's not going to be any end in sight it's 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 very difficult to watch. This is the unraveling of our nation. I mean, um, it's interesting to me to, to see your reaction as Canadians looking down at, at the United States, literally and figuratively, um, as to what is going on here and will there be an end to this? You know, we look down as Canadians and we see the U.S. burning in more ways than one. Lisa, billionaire Michael Bloomberg says he's going to spend about $100 million to help Democratic candidate Joe Biden in Florida. Tell me more about that. Right. So we're looking at six states, the same um, three that were integral in determining the outcome in 2016 when Trump won against Hillary Clinton to now be the same three states plus three more um, that will be integral in the uh, 2020 election just coming up in, 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 in a month over a month. Um, so, you know, everyone is pretty much throwing their hat in the ring and saying we're going to do anything it takes not to get Biden elected, but to get Trump uh, unelected um, and out of office. Look, I've said this before. This is a Trump-Trump election. You either want Trump or you don't want Trump. No one ever talks about Biden, what his policies are, what he stands for, or what he's going to do for the nation. But people are sure, are very confident that they want Trump in office or very confident that they do not want Trump in office. So uh, Mayor, uh, former New York Mayor Bloomberg is going to spend his millions on getting Trump dethroned, and he's going to spend that money in the um, state that's most up for grabs, which is Florida. Now, according to a battleground tracker, Biden has also gained in Arizona over Trump and has a big lead in Minnesota. I guess there shouldn't be any surprise in Minnesota. Right. Um, exactly right. So we're seeing a lot of the swing states swing in the favor of Biden. But again, you know, um, I think back to 2016 and um, a lot of the polls had Hillary favored. I think most polls had Hillary favored. And we had a little surprise here in this country. Um, I think many are still surprised and it's almost been four years. So people have not gotten over the surprise and the shock of Trump winning the presidency. But, um, you know, I spoke to Frank Luntz, who is the premier um, American pollster here, uh, and he said it's about a four point difference um, at the moment. It's changing continuously. Um, and again, we, we question oftentimes the uh, veracity of these polls because of, of many different reasons, but um, we shall see. November will tell. You know, I was even surprised, too, that uh, Trump won the Republican nomination. I thought it was Cruz, Ted Cruz for the taking, but, you know, that, that fell through. Now, according to a report by Fox News, Iran was considering a plot to assassinate the U.S. ambassador to South Africa. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I think this story was originally reported by Politico um, that there is this um, a, a female um, ambassador, U.S. ambassador to South Africa. Um, and there was a, pl a plot that has been since foiled um, where the Iranian regime wanted to take her out in retaliation for the killing of shadowy commander Qasem Soleimani. If you remember, he was taken out by U.S. forces in Iraq in January um, for his involvement and mastermind uh, in killing many U.S. troops and others. Um, and uh, Iran, I guess, is still um, in retaliation mode to figure out how they could get the U.S. back. Now, remember, Iran, the regime is also upset 
um, at the coalition or the peace deal that is being drawn up by the United States between Israel and the UAE and Bahrain, Arab nations that are being drawn towards the U.S. and Israel. Obviously, this doesn't look too good for the Iranian regime, who is losing its allies in the region. U.S. President Donald Trump is targeting illicit Iran trade ahead of the Israel Gulf Nations White House meeting. Yes. So um, I will actually be flying to Washington to be in attendance for the signing. Um, I've been invited by the White House to uh, attend the witnessing of the signing of the Abraham Accords, which is the peace deal between Israel and the UAE. And now Bahrain will be signatory to that as well. Um, and, you know, it's looked upon as a deal that has, is meant to not just um, you know, spruce up this, this economic uh, exchange between the Arab nations and Israel, but is really meant to kind of corner the Iranian regime. And um, in, in addition to this cornering of the Iranian regime, there will be additional sanctions that are being, being put in place. Um, this, as reports indicate that Iran has stepped up its nuclear activity, over the weekend, the wrestler protester who was um, who became an international figure was executed by the Iranian regime. Uh, you know, it's all bad behavior, and it is all brazen behavior. It's all muscle flexing, and you know, the international community community is speaking up and saying we don't side with you anymore. Uh, and you know, this is uh, obviously spearheaded by Donald Trump and the White House, and um, they will continue to to press and uh, have their, their pressure campaign corner the Iranian regime. The Trump administration has accused China of escalation in the latest restrictions on American diplomats, Lisa. Relations between your country and China have deteriorated in recent months with both sides battling over trade disputes, human rights, and the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. Yes, so both sides exchanging these um, attacks, these accusations as to who, uh, who, which one is undermining global peace the most. Is it the U.S. or is it China? And they're exchanging these words, not only exchanging these words, but um, pressuring each other's diplomats, kicking them out, kicking out press, um, really uh, trying to corner one another, and neither side is backing down. Look. President Trump, before he was president, was candidate Trump. And candidate Trump said he needs or wants to um, teach China a lesson, for lack of a, of a better term. Uh, he wanted the Chinese to pay their share in global trade, not take advantage of American kindness, not take advantage of the global community. And if they want to play along, um, they have to play along. They have to play along nicely. Um, and that has not changed. And now add to that the tariffs. You and I have spoken about that week after week, month after month, and then coronavirus, which was the, the ultimate. Um, and, and in the eyes of the Chinese, this was, you know, a, a, a low blow um, for the U.S. to blame them for the origins of the coronavirus and to blame them for actually spreading the coronavirus. Um, so, you know, the, this will continue. I, we hope that that election time, this conversation um, will hopefully be done with, but who knows. Lisa, Greece is purchasing warplanes and battleships to help boost defenses against its biggest rival, Turkey. Yes, this is a rivalry that has been going on actually for a long time. Not many people talk about it, but um, Turkey basically is calling dibs on um, a part part of an island of, uh, that Greece also claims ownership to, um, where there is oil, of course, and there are other natural assets. And this rivalry keeps going back and forth. And now both of them are heating up uh, uh, tensions and, 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 and um, beefing up their arsenals and, and flexing their muscles. And experts warn that this could lead to a, a regional problem that is much worse than anything else we're looking at. Um, not many people are paying attention to this still. Uh, but when you're looking at a country like Greece that is now focused on weaponry and on um, obtaining more assets, then we know that it's getting more and more serious and, and heated as we speak. Peace talks between Afghanistan and the Taliban have begun in Doha. And at least it looks like a rocky road ahead. Very. And, you know, we've talked about this. There has been no resolution that has led to any relief for the Afghani people. Um, the Taliban continue with their um, horrific suicide bombings and, you know, tactics. We're dealing with a terror organization and we're trying to put them in place to give the people of Afghanistan a future. 
and the government has no recourse but to deal with the terrorists. And the the U.S. and and the the the, the Western coalition has done the same. They've put the future of Afghanistan in the hands of terrorists. Um, and now they're meeting in Doha and along with others that are looking at Qatar and the relationship between the U.S. and Qatar in the backdrop of the UAE, Bahrain, Israel deal. And now we're also looking at the future of Afghanistan. Um, in the final hours of the Trump presidency, they are attempting to leave the Middle East better than they found it. And, you know, many would argue that they have done that. Um, particularly with this historic deal between Israel, Bahrain, and the UAE. Um, but they would like to do the same in withdrawing troops from Iraq, from Afghanistan, and hopefully shaking the Qataris into not dealing with terrorists, not supporting terrorists, and turning away from the Iranian regime once and for all. Our foreign affairs expert, Lisa Daftari, joining me once again from Los Angeles. Thanks so much, Lisa. My pleasure.